Bible schoolers, it is so awesome to be with you this midweek. I know usually I'm on the stage in the sanctuary, but today I am going to be talking to you from home. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I know things are opening up and um, it seems as if we're almost getting back into the rhythm of things. But if you're like me in any way, or if you're like most of the people in the United States right now, or most people in the world right now, as things are reopening and as we're kind of getting back into the swing of things of some of us maybe going back to school, some of us um, still like seeing friends a little bit, coming back to church, all these things, you might feel different. Um, you might feel like things maybe have shifted in your heart and in your mind. You might feel a little bit more awkward around people. You might feel even in your mental health or the way that you think, the way you feel about yourself, it might have shifted. And I just want to encourage you that that's super normal. Um, it's happening to me, so I'm, I assume it's happening to you guys as well. And I know from talking with a lot of you that it is happening. Um, and so if you guys have your Bibles, open up to James 1. Um, I want to share a little bit about James 1, 2 through 4. It's a really powerful verse. Uh, but before we get into that, let me pray for you. Um, Father, we love you. God, I pray that your word would go forth. Um, God, we need you every single day. Um, we need your presence. We need your guide. And we need your comfort and your peace, God. And so, Lord, I pray in this next season, as things are getting back into the swing of things, God, would we be aware of what's going on in our lives? Would we be aware of what's going on in our hearts and our minds? Lord, would we realize that you're with us, Lord? And so um, we give you all of the glory, God, and all of the honor and all the praise. Everyone said, amen. Um, something about us being home for, I, I'm a butcher of the days, but I'm pretty sure it was anywhere from six to seven months. Us being home, some of us only seeing a certain amount of people, it has really affected our mental and emotional health. It was challenging. It was difficult. We weren't able to see people. Maybe your parents suffered from a job loss. Maybe um, you experienced hardship with friendships. Maybe um, someone that you know got corona. Like We've all experienced this on different scales. Something that's super interesting, I was looking at the statistics, um, 90, comparative from July 2019 to September 2020, 93% more people struggle with anxiety, 62% more of people struggle with depression. Um, and it's crazy and it's, it's awful to hear, but here's the reality is that you were created for two reasons, to love God and to love people. And so if you were loving God while you're in quarantine, that probably it was helping so much. But there's this second aspect of your life, which is to love people, that when you're doing these two things and you're doing them well, you'll actually feel super purposed and super satisfied in your life. It's what you were created to do. You are created to know God and to make him known. But we all know because of 2020, because of this year, even with the political climate, everything going on, there are trials there are hard things that go on in our lives. Maybe you've had hard stuff with relationships, a boyfriend or girlfriend or ex. Maybe you've had hardships with friends. Maybe you've had hardship with online school. Why is online school harder than normal school? I couldn't tell you, right? Things are going on in our lives and it's difficult. But we're encouraged in James 1, 2 through 4. So if you don't have your Bibles, you should open them up. Um, James 1, 2 through 4. This is what it reads. It says, count it pure joy, my brothers. Um, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let perseverance have its full effect that you may be put mature and complete, lacking nothing. If I were to ask you during 2020, this whole year, have you lacked anything? We would have a long list of the things that we've lacked. Man, I've lacked seeing people. I've lacked um, being able to go outside, go to the park, uh, play sports with my friends, go to dance practice. Um, whatever your thing is, we've missed doing those things. But this weird verse in James 1, 2 through 4, he's telling us to count it pure joy when we meet trials, when we meet hardship, when we meet struggle, to be joyful in it. And it doesn't make sense at all, right? It, it like really doesn't make sense. It's as if I were to give you a million dollars and I said, hey, with this million dollars, I just want you to know, I give it to you, but I want you to be really sad about it. I want you to be super depressed about it, have all this anxiety about it. I want you to be freaked out. For you, it would kind of not make a lot of sense to you because you're like, 
I'm actually super stoked because I have a million dollars right now, right? That's super normal. I would be super stoked for a million dollars. If any of you want to give me a million dollars, God bless, okay? But like we, we, we would be super excited because that's a normal response. And in the same way, when things are difficult, when things are hard, when there's struggles in our life, it's normal to get sad. It's normal to get anxious. It's n normal to get depressing or even suicidal thoughts. These things the enemy wants to trap us in but we see this alternative way. We see this different perspective that James is showing us. He's saying, hey, count it pure joy. When you struggle, count it joy, right? And so this is what he's saying is he's saying in the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your problem, everything going on in your mental health and your emotional health and your even physical health and even just your personality, your friendships, everything going on in your life, in the midst of everything that's difficult, in the midst of being surrounded by things that are difficult, count it joy. Because when you count it joy, you know that the struggle, whatever going on in your life, it's asked, it's actually testing your trust in God. It's testing your trust in God in the situation. And when your trust is in God, it produces this consistency in him. Well, you're a consistent and a constant person in your faith so that no matter what happens, that, that perseverance, that endurance, that consistency in your life, it actually is good for you so that when any trial comes your way, when anything happens, you lack nothing. And that's what this verse is talking about. And it's so interesting as I was studying two through four, when it says count it pure joy, this is what it's actually saying, lead out of whole joy lead out of every kind of joy. And I've said this a lot at Rock Youth, um, but happiness, it's based on happenings. You're happy, you got a million dollars. You're happy, you got an A on a test. You're happy, you're eating the best meal you've ever had, right? That's happiness because it's based on what's happening. But the cool thing about joy is that it doesn't actually matter about your circumstance. It doesn't matter about what's going on, that that joy isn't based on happenings. It's not based on occasion. It's not based on anything about anything, actually. It's based on God, that God loves you, that he's your provider, and that you trust him, and you know he's going to take care of you. And so count it pure joy. Lead out of whole joy. Lead out of every kind of joy. And it says when you meet trials of various kinds, the word trials, what it's talking about is any experience of evil, anything, honestly, that is remotely bad. Anything like, so you stub your toe. How many of you want to like die when you stub your toe, right? Hit that pinky toe. I lose it, right? In that moment, count it pure joy. When you get in an argument with a friend, when you get in a disagreement with your parents, it's hard and it's okay for it to be hard and it's okay to feel that. But in the midst of that, there's this umbrella of joy in your life that you know that this is producing in your heart and in your spiritual life a trust in God, right? So trials, adversity, any experience of evil. For you know that this is a testing of your faith. What this is basically saying is that in the midst of everything that's difficult, it's actually a trial of genuineness in your heart. It's a trial and a testing of your trustworthiness, right? So in the midst of hard things, it's actually revealing in my heart, do I trust God? Is my faith genuine? Do I really care about the things of God? Do I really love him? Do I really love my neighbor? Like these things in our hearts, what really shows the fruit of it, what really shows if it's real, and if you actually trust God, is trials, is hardship, is struggles in your life. It shows and it, it's a testing of what's genuine in your life. And it says it produces perseverance. It produces steadfastness, which means patiently waiting, constant endurance, right? In order for you to finish a race, in order for you to um, uh, complete a, like a really hard physical activity, you need to have endurance. You need to have the lung capacity. You need to have the strength. You need to know that you've practiced enough that when a trial comes, when a run comes, when a sprint comes, that you're not going to get gassed right in the middle, but you've been training for it and working for it, that you're going to complete it, right? And so in the midst of every hardship, in the midst of every trial, like, yes, it's hard. Yes, it's difficult, but you're going to count it. You're going to lead out of joy because you know that this is a testing of what's genuine and you know it's going to produce something in your life. 
And that, that thing that it's going to produce, produce is that you're consistent and you're constant in your faith. That when doubt comes, when hardship comes, that you will not run from God, but you'll, you'll press into your friendships. You'll press into the Father and know that that relationship is actually everything you need. And so what I love, it says it has its full effect, right? That you may be mature and complete. Those words is basically saying that you would be complete, sound, perfect, whole, entire. That you legit will be perfect and be living like the life that God created you to live. That you'll be sound. You'll be steady. And what's interesting at the end of this passage, it says lacking in nothing, right? So count it pure joy. Lead out of joy, my brothers, that when you meet trials of various kinds, you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And perseverance, have, let it have its full effect that you may b- be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. So when it says lacking, right, it means to leave, to fail, or to be absent. And so what it's saying in this moment is that you won't leave, you won't fail, and you won't be absent in what's going on in your life. You will not leave the faith. You won't be absent in the faith, but you will literally lack nothing. You won't need to leave for anything, but you'll be present for everything. Lacking in nothing, lacking in anything. You won't lack in anyone. You won't lack in possessions. You won't lack in people because all of those things, they come and they go. Growing up, my parents always said, Fam, um, friends come and go, but family stays forever. The reality is everything comes and goes. The only thing that you can fully trust in your life is Jesus. He's constant. He's steady. He loves you. He knows you fully and loves you fully. And so I just want to encourage you guys that although the statistics show that anxiety is higher than it's ever been, depression is higher than it's ever been, like struggle in school is higher than it's ever been, like unrest in our country is the highest it's ever been. When it seems as if it's James 2, when it's saying we're surrounded by trials of various kinds, um, various kinds, when we're surrounded and we, we fell into something that we didn't want to get ourselves into, no one wanted 2020. 2020 wanted us, okay? It happened to us and we're surrounded by it. So this is what I will encourage you in high schoolers is that in the midst of all these things, Lead out of joy, knowing that that joy isn't based on circumstances. It's not based on people. It's not even based on your family or what's going on, but it's based on God. That in this moment of of hardship, in this moment of 2020, that it's producing in you a consistency and a constant in your faith. That you will have a trust in God like nothing else. So that trust will actually help you in the rest of your life. That man, you're going to look back to 2020 and say, hey, That actually really helped me in my faith. And now I know moving forward, any trial, anything going on, I have joy because I know it's working on my trust. I'm shaping and molding my trust that it will be perfect and I won't lack lack in anything. And so I hope that encourages you. I know reading this verse, it encouraged me so much that I can count up pure joy and that I don't lack in anything because I want to be genuine in my faith and have real trust in God. Um, I love you guys. If it's not 645 already, jump onto our Google Meets. Um, We're excited to have conversation about it. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.